What's up? This is Tim with Studio4Media.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to create particles from a texture. We're going to be creating the shape and the color from a texture, and this is a really cool technique that's very useful and can be used for a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, we're going to create a polygon plane and you can just make it the width of the grid is fine and um, next we have to have an image that we're going to be emitting our particles from so I pulled off an image just from Google and I just typed in uh, galaxy go to images and you want to make sure that your image is at least a, a fairly good resolution. You don't want it to be incredibly pixelated because um, each particle is going to be taking off of basically a pixel. So I chose this galaxy picture right here because um, it's a good size, got nice color to it, and it'll look really good when we start emitting our particles from it. So you can choose whatever picture you want from any texture. And um, what we're going to do before we apply our texture is go ahead and emit some particles from this object and that way I can kind of show you how this is working so go in the dynamics tab select particles emit from objects and I'm going to go into the properties here and just make sure we have it set how we want make sure your emitted, emitter type is set to surface your rate uh, this is probably going to have to be higher something like that and everything else looks pretty good so we'll hit create. Now if we play it back we just have a whole bunch of particles rising up from this plane. Alright, let's go ahead and add our texture to it. So in the emitter tab in the attribute editor if we scroll down there's this box that says texture emission attributes and you can see here it can only be applied to NURB surfaces and polygon surfaces. So what we want to do is we want to inherit the color of our image as well as the shape. So what we're going to do is under particle color hit this box and we'll create a new file node and we're going to open up what color we want our particles to be. Now you notice here that I have the galaxy image pulled off from Google and I also have a black and white image that I've kinda contrasted and, and crushed the blacks and increased the whites. Now the reason for doing that is because if I were to just pull off the shape from this we have a whole bunch of different stars in the background over here and, and we have you know it's just stars kinda all over the place so we would have particles everywhere and it would look like a jumbled mesh and it wouldn't look very good whereas this picture here it's highly contrasted Maya can see where the particles are where they're not and put the majority of the particles in the right places so it's just better to have a black and white image that's highly contrasted when you're doing this type of effect um, where Maya needs to extrapolate where the particles need to be positioned so, but we want this image for the color of the particles. And both of these images will be available for download uh, in the project file. So, let's go ahead and select this image here. And you notice if we hit play, nothing happens. Our particles aren't emitting the color that we want it to. Um, that's because you have to tell Maya to inherit the color that we just assigned to it. So you see here right beneath our particle color we have to tell it to inherit the particle color. Now it gives us a warning down here it does not have the following attribute RGP, RGB PP. Now I'll explain how we get around that here in a little bit because you notice here even though we hit inherit color after we assign the color it's still not going to give us the color we want. We'll deal with that here in a little bit but why we're here we also want to inherit the texture rate or the shape of our texture. So we're going to do the exact same thing. 
click this box, add a new file node, open up, but this time we're going to add our black and white image because that's where we want our shape to come from. Double click that and if we play you notice that we do not have the shape that we want. That's because we have the same problem. We have to go back to our texture rate and say enable texture rate. Now we're starting to see something. If we hit play and I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide our polygon surface because we don't need it anymore. If we hit play you can kind of see that the shape is not the same as it used to be and you can actually probably see it better if I go into wireframe mode. So it's not taking up the whole surface. We have some areas that aren't being filled with particles. One thing right now that is kind of messing up our shape is the particles are just floating and they're going on forever. They're just going to keep rising and keep rising and keep rising and we don't want that. So let's, with the particles selected, in the emitter tab, go to speed. Our speed is set to one. If we set that to zero, our particles will just be born and stick to the place where they're born at. So now if we play this back, instead of floating up in the air, they're just going to stick. And you see, if we let it run for a little bit, it's going to take on the shape of our galaxy. And actually, we can probably increase the rate by a little bit so we can fill this up a little bit faster. And now you can see this is starting to look like a galaxy. So we have the shape of it, but we still don't have the color that we want. So the error message that it gave us was that we didn't have the right attribute assigned. So what we need to do is, with the emitter selected, I'm sorry, it's actually in the particle section. So the particle shape here, if you scroll down, you'll see a list of per particle attributes. That's what that PP meant, is per particle. Um, and you can add a color attribute. And they have just some shortcuts down here under the add dynamic attributes. So instead of having to go through here and pull up the uh, particle attributes, you can just do the um, shortcut that they have built in for you. All you have to do is hit the color button there and it's going to pull up a box here and ask you how do you want to add your color? Do you want to add it per object or per particle? And then also you can add per shader which can per shader will um, add one color to every single um, particle. Add per particle attribute will basically take an image like the image we have wherever the particle is born Maya will look at the pixel that it's closest to and assign it to the color that that pixel is. And that's the reason why you want to have a higher resolution image because the higher the resolution, the more pixels there are in it. So the more particles you can put in it and the better your image will look. And that's what we want right now is we want to have it per particle. Hit add attribute. And now we should be getting something that looks pretty close to galaxy. And you can see here, this is looking pretty good. We could even bump up the, our rate a little bit more if we wanted to, or even increase our time, let it run for a little bit longer, and kind of fill in those gaps. But what's really cool about using this galaxy is that galaxies are just made up of a whole bunch of different stars. And basically that's what we're doing, is we're using a whole bunch of different particles to create this image. And so you could say that every single particle represents a star. Uh, now you notice we have one problem, and that problem is our galaxy is just flat right now because we set our speed to zero. But we don't want to have our speed on because then the particles will just be going forever. So how do we fix this? Well, if we select our particles, go back to our emitter attribute, and we scroll down to our basic emission attributes. We see we have speed, we have speed random, tangent, and normal speed. Now we set our speed to zero because we don't want them to be going on forever. And there's a way to get around this. You can just set the max distance or the min distance in the distance and direction attribute. Basically, if I set this max distance to one, I'm telling it to go up one Maya unit and then don't emit any particles past that. 
So now if I hit play, you see we have some depth to our galaxy now, but it's not going past it. So I've increased this one my unit, and now our galaxy looks a lot better. And you can see the uh, the wide range of variety that you could use uh, by having particles being emit from a texture. Uh, there's so many different things you could use with it. This is just one example, and this is more of a basic example to kind of get you familiar with how uh, to use particles in Maya and um, how to use this really uh, cool technique that not a lot of people know about. Because uh, it is kind of confusing on how to uh, set it all up. Um, the different uh, things you have to tell Maya to do. But uh, this is basically it. Here it is. We have some depth. We could even rotate our particles if we want to uh, to make it look more like a galaxy, I guess. And um, you could do some really cool camera movements by zooming in, zooming out, rotating around, and uh, just a really awesome and fast way to create a really good looking galaxy. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful, and uh, please take a look at all of our other videos on studio4media.com, and we'll see you next time.